Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me for a brand new feng shui episode. Thank you so much for the overwhelming response on my last feng shui video. I know it has been quite some time since I filmed it, but I am so happy that there is a general interest in everything feng shui. Today we'll be dissecting feng shui for the bedroom. If you don't know too much about feng shui but want to learn more, definitely check out my previous episodes on the subject. I will link all of my previous episodes below. I would love for you to take a look, watch the simple guides as feng shui is really an ancient art approach for your home. While there are other feng shui topics that I eventually want to discuss in more detail, like understanding the ba gua, understanding the five elements of feng shui and how they relate to each other, earth, wood, fire, water, and metal, how to use colors in feng shui, but today we are going to be discussing bedroom feng shui. We are prioritizing the bedroom next because I feel like it's such an important aspect to your life and home. Bedrooms can influence your health, wealth, and happiness, and I'm really just not talking about material wealth. I'm talking about your quality of life and the richness of your relationships with your friends, your family, your loved ones, your partner, your peers, your coworkers. I mean, really, a good night's sleep is going to help you tackle whatever life has to throw at you so you can tackle your everyday life with confidence, purpose, and direction. When you have good chi in the bedroom, it brings positivity, happiness, and good vibes to everything that you do. You know what it's like to have a bad night. I mean, you didn't get good sleep, you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, everything is off to like the wrong start. And then all of a sudden you go into work and it affects like your interpersonal relationships with your peers and your coworkers, and it may just spiral into this bottomless pit. If you're single, it's going to affect all of your interpersonal relationships. If you're in a relationship, bad chi can cause marital issues and eventually may trickle down to your family's well-being down the line. Bad chi can make everyone bitter. If you've been getting into arguments with your spouse and partner like a lot lately and you don't know why, it could be the chi in the bedroom. You may not be communicating, there could be a lack of trust, you're not spending a whole lot of quality time together. Some things are definitely out of your control, but there are a whole host of things that you can control in the bedroom. The orientation of your room, how clean and well kept the bedroom is, the colors that you use in the space, but the most important factor to good chi in the bedroom is the orientation of your bed. Before we get into good and bad layouts, I want you to understand the shape of your bedroom. Just visualize your bedroom if you're not currently sitting in your bedroom and figure out what the shape of your bedroom is. The best, most auspicious shapes are squares and rectangles. If the shape of the bedroom is irregular, you might have angled corners, you might have a missing corner. You can just sketch out the shape of the bedroom as is, like a square or a rectangle. Pay attention to the missing corners so that we can later enhance it with auspicious symbols down the line. If your bedroom has an ensuite bathroom, meaning that there's a bathroom with a door located right in your bedroom, treat it as a separate space. Feng Shui does not like irregular rooms like an L shape or like a missing corner or even curved walls and bay windows in the room. The goal is to be able to create perfect little squares or a rectangle and always have a partition or a door to close off the entry to the bathroom. If you have an opening straight into the bathroom that it could be met with a long hallway, it could be met with just an opening, you always want to try to cover that up. You could use a drapery rod with a curtain panel that's hanging below. You may install a barn door. You always want to have a physical separator so the negative energy from the toilet doesn't permeate the bedroom. A good night's rest contributes to your physical and mental well-being. It plays a significant role in how you act, think, feel, create, perform. So there's nothing like a good night's sleep to get you revved up for the day.
Good Feng Shui is all about balance, symmetry, and harmony. They're essentially the same principles that guide really great interior design. You will see a lot of similarities between the two, so don't be surprised if you find that interior design follows the same guidelines and common practices as Good Feng Shui. I mean, now that I'm talking about it, I wonder if my years growing up practicing Feng Shui really just carved out this career path for me. If you believe that the universe works in mysterious ways and that everything is tied in, then there really are no accidents. Let's talk about balance, symmetry, and harmony in Feng Shui. Balance is the distribution of visual objects in a space. Essentially how color, textures, shapes, and patterns visually affect the weight of the space. If you think of interior design like a physical scale with varying weights, Think about how you may achieve balance by using these design elements. Symmetry is when there exists a mirror image of elements in the room. It's the creation of visual pairs in a bedroom. We're talking symmetrical nightstands, symmetrical wall sconces, art pieces. Even bedding is how you can achieve good feng shui for the bedroom. Feng Shui loves symmetry, so always opt for two of the exact same items versus an asymmetrical look with the same visual weight. Harmony is when different elements are combined together to create a whole unifying look a cohesive color palette, similar shapes. Even contrasting textures can visually mix and bring a sense of unity to a room. Next, we'll be talking about bed placements, do's and don'ts. I touched on the subject on my first video, a Feng Shui for the home. It was really a basic guideline of how you should place your bed in relation to the entry door. Today, I'll be diving into a lot more detail and I want to show you different layouts so you really understand the positioning of the bed and how it can affect the chi that's coming into the room. Bed placement is a single most important aspect of good feng shui in the bedroom. The best placement of the bed is directly diagonal from the entry door in the far corner. The command position allows the sleeping person full view of the door and who's coming in and out. Now let's talk about the bed placement don'ts. Bad bed layouts create sleeping issues, as well as relationship and marital problems for those who occupy the room. A door opening that cuts directly into the bed or when the bed is aligned with the door. This is an absolute don't. Your feet is directly in front of the door, which Feng Shui considers a death position. It's how people who have passed get carried out of their bedrooms. This is the absolute worst position for your bed to be in. Another don't is when the headboard is located on the entry door wall. While sleeping, you are not in a command position and you can't see who's coming in or out. Another don't is when the door opens onto the side of the sleeper. This cutting chi harms the bed and the sleeper. Once you understand where your bed needs to be located in a command position, of course you have to take into consideration all of the windows in the room, 
the passages. Basically, it's just the clearance that's around your furniture. You might have a door that opens to a closet. You might have a door that opens up to your bathroom. Prioritize the command position of your bed first. Then you can factor in all the other details to figure out which is the best wall to place your headboard. Here are my top 12 bedroom feng shui taboos. These are absolute no-nos when it comes to feng shui for your bedroom. Just remember that your bedroom needs to be a place of pure rest and relaxation. It's a place for you to get a good night's sleep, rest and recharge. Beds on the floor. You are absorbing too much yin or dead energy when you sleep. So definitely raise your bed up if you wanna have better feng shui in the bedroom. Beds at an angle. This signifies that you have no solid support, both figuratively and literally. Fill up that empty corner if you must sleep this way. You're also lacking in balance and symmetry, two of the key core factors of bedroom feng shui. How would you place your nightstands for symmetry in this fashion? Positioning your bed at an angle throws off the entire orientation of the room. Beds facing a mirror. Mirrors have too much active yang energy for a place of rest. Feng Shui principles guide that you shouldn't have any types of mirrors in the bedroom. This reflects way too much active energy when you should be sleeping and resting. This includes a mirror reflecting the top of the bed, the middle of the bed, or even the edge of the bed. Mirrors placed behind the headboard, even though it's not reflecting the bed, is equally as damaging since there's so much active yang energy that's reflecting right back at your head. This image shows an armoire with a mirror that's reflected on the side of the bed. This condition can actually work for the bedroom, except that in this reflection, you'll also see that there's a series of mirrors that's reflecting right at the foot of the bed. So these mirrors are an absolute no, but this wardrobe could work for the bedroom. If you absolutely have to have a mirror in your bedroom, let's say for your vanity, make sure that it's kind of off to the side and not reflecting any portion of the bed. Avoid anything sharp, angular, or cutting, especially when it cuts through right to the top of your head. This sends out cutting chi to your head and your bed. You don't want anything pointed directly at the bed or your head. This signifies that you'll be bombarded with killing energy while you sleep. Does this mean that the energy is going to kill you? No, this simply just means that it's going to kill all of the positive chi you need when you rest. If you're sitting in your bedroom, I want you to try this really quick exercise. Sit on your bed and develop a 360 degree lens all around your room. I want you to look up, 
I want you to look down. I want you to kind of scan the room from side to side and just look for anything that's kind of pointing at you. It could be the corner of like a dresser. It could be the corner of a wall that's aimed directly at your head. Just think in symbolic terms, anything that's sharp or angled is like a poison arrow kind of shooting straight at you. There are many ways that you can address the poison arrow. Number one, you can remove it if it's a piece of furniture or a piece of decor. If not, you can always block it, either with a partition, another piece of furniture, or maybe even a pillow or bedding. Just think of creative ways that you can come up with solutions to help soften the blow. you absolutely want to avoid an overhead ceiling fan in the bedroom. The ceiling fan distributes too much active energy. Think of every blade as a poison arrow that keeps shooting at you over and over. If the ceiling fan is above the feet, it's okay, but I would still avoid it and replace it with a beautiful chandelier or flush mount instead. The same idea with air conditioning units. The blast of cold air is also like a poison arrow aimed at your bed or your head. Reposition the unit at a lower vantage point and perhaps on the floor away from the bed. Another feng shui taboo for the bedroom is lamps placed directly above your head. We're talking about light fixtures and lamps that are directly above you. An easy solution is to simply place it on the sides on your symmetrical nightstands. Let's talk about artwork in the bedroom. Paintings of wild animals, Any body of water, like a lake, a beach, is an absolute no-no for the bedroom. Think peaceful scenes, protective mountains, beautiful landscape, or abstract artwork in soft tonal hues. Nothing too jagged, too pointy, or high contrast. I've also heard that it's not a good idea to hang a picture or even a sculptural item of Buddha or Christ in the bedroom. Unless you're single. Then you can place a picture directly behind your head, but never in front of it where your feet are directly pointed to the painting. Avoid clutter. I mean really avoid clutter at all costs, not just for feng shui, but for really great interior design. Nothing drags down positive energy more than clutter. Clutter accumulates stale energy and makes you depressed as a result. The goal is to have a place for everything in your bedroom. A really great tip is that you can have a catch-all chair in the corner of your bedroom. This could be a small ottoman as well. It's generally a place that you can throw all of your things, especially if you're trying to get out of the room in a hurry. You'll eventually get to it, but in this case, at least all of the clutter is in one corner of the bedroom versus being strewn all about. Let's talk about the bathrooms and the positions of the toilet. Toilets opposite above or sharing a wall drains your chi. The idea is that you should move your bed to another wall.
You also don't want to be able to see the bathroom door or the toilet from your head position. That's equally as afflicting to Chi. Always keep the bathroom door closed and prioritize moving your bed to the optimal command position in relation to the location of the bathroom. Sleeping on the wrong size bed. This really just means a bed that's too small for you or especially if your feet are dangling on the edge of the bed. This symbolizes that you cannot grow in life. It restricts you from growing in your career, romance, and business aspects. This applies to kids as well. Change the size of your kids' beds as they grow to promote future growth. Windows behind your bed. Windows behind the bed are a feng shui no because all of that active yang energy rushes through the window and hits your head. Since you're prioritizing the command position, sometimes the command position in a bedroom naturally falls on a wall with windows, but there are many ways to combat this. You can layer the windows with curtains or blinds and always keep them closed at night. Windows on the side benefit from fresh chi permeating the room versus shooting straight through your back. If you have an opportunity to place the bed on a command position with the windows coming from the side, that would be your best bet for the best feng shui position. And finally, storing items above your head or below the bed. Unstable items disturb chi. Drawers underneath the bed that constantly move in and out, that clutter confuses Chi. Bookshelves above signify that you are constantly overwhelmed with information. If you must have books above your bed, especially if you're in a small studio space or an apartment that you need that extra storage, make sure that there's cabinets that you can close. Books placed under your bed is like you're stepping over your schoolwork and can't be bothered with it. I know a lot of these sound really kooky, but to me, it's all symbolic. There's really so much to cover for bedroom feng shui, and I absolutely want to detail more. I want to end this video with a little bed placement pop quiz. I'll be showing you empty bedroom layouts with an entry door. I want you to be able to locate where the bed should go in a command position, and let's see how many you get right.
Feng Shui is all about energy and how everything within your domain can have its own intrinsic energy. That energy can be auspicious, beneficial, benevolent, or even harmful energy that can affect your own spirit and well-being. It's all about being aware of your surroundings, removing or curing poison arrows, and balancing out the positive or negative effects of what you are trying to achieve. Feng Shui, like good interior design, has a great deal of common sense to it. My goal is to help you become more mindful of your living space and show you how to create beautiful spaces that are functional, inviting, inspired, and let the good vibes in. The most important thing that you should always remember is how you feel in a space. Regardless of what anyone told you, what I shared in this video, what you may have researched online, always tune in to how you feel in a space. If something disturbs you, remove it. If you have a mirror in your bedroom and you've never been bothered by it and you really can't tell, then that energy in the bedroom won't harm you. It's a good idea to play with different decor objects that are in your bedroom so you can develop a sixth sense about it and see how it feels in your space. I hope you have a better understanding of bedroom feng shui now and how sleeping in a command position is really going to usher in all of that positive chi. If you like this type of content and you want more feng shui videos, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions when it comes to feng shui for the bedroom. Also let me know if you want a feng shui series broken down room by room. There is still so much that I want to cover in bedrooms, let alone every single other room in the house, but I absolutely want to know that there's a general interest in it so I can start working on the series. While I am in no way the expert on feng shui, I really just consider myself a lifelong practitioner, but I really just love the topic. I think there's so much to be said about aligning yourself and your energy with the things that you value in your home. The placement of your furniture, the actual furnishings you pick, your home decor items, everything should hold a weighted value in your home so you can usher in all of that positive chi for your life and surroundings. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and absolutely share this video with anyone you know who's interested in more feng shui. Don't forget to watch my previous feng shui videos where I detail all of the basic tips and guidelines. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.